I have a sea, a land where the fish live. Spring comes soon because spring and summer bring a lot of fish. I have a golden carp. If you want to eat it, you must come to us. <coughs> Stark white fields, salt-covered shorelines, long abandoned boats strewn about on sandy waves of endless desert. Here, relics of past prosperity offer mute testimony to one of the world's greatest environmental disasters. The Aral Sea, a vast inland lake bisecting the republics of Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan. Originally, the Aral Sea was the size of the entire country of Ireland. For centuries, the Amu and Sir Darya rivers had provided the Aral Sea with constant fresh water, enriching its mineral composition and promoting diverse marine life. Fifty years ago, in an effort to bolster Russia's textile industry, Russian Premier Nikita Khrushchev ordered the diversion of water from the Amu Darya and Sir Darya rivers to the white gold fields the cotton farms of Uzbekistan. Unlined and open ditch methods used to irrigate Uzbekistan's cotton fields led to wide-scale inefficiencies. Fully 80% of the water diverted from the Amu and Sir Darya rivers for cotton farming was lost to evaporation and seepage. From the very beginning, Khrushchev's decision to divert this life-giving flow caused problems. The Aral Sea began to shrink and its salinity increased. Today, half of the Aral Sea has been lost. It is a loss of monumental proportions. With the Aral Sea drying up and cotton production struggling to produce acceptable yields, a crisis began to affect some 30 million people all across Central Asia. In the early 1950s, the Aral Sea's commercial fishing industry was flourishing, providing 60,000 people with jobs, homes and a thriving, comfortable community life. Today, that industry is gone. Those who lived through the tragedy are haunted by bittersweet memories. The sea fishing port and a fish processing plant were situated here. Its coastline went from here out further to the west. In this port, we have piers where the cargo was loaded and unloaded. Over there, a bit further, you see a sawmill where we sawed the timber for the ships. Further away, you see the depot of the fishing port. With more than 20,000 square kilometers of salty, barren sea floor exposed, up to 43 million tons of contaminated dust is carried each year by winds and deposited on croplands and populated areas. In a region now gripped with poverty, children dig salt for money. But even the meager amounts of salt which they mine with their hands is a toxic menace, loaded with pesticides used in agriculture. At a local health station, doctors and nurses confront epidemics of lung disease and throat cancer and anemia, blown to epidemic proportions, all brought on by a toxic dust, the residue of a ravaged environment an environment robbed of its fresh water. With the collapse of the Soviet Union, the future of the Aral Sea and those who live there now rests with the Central Asian republics in the Amu Darya and Sir Darya river basins. These republics are seeking help from international institutions, organizations with expertise in water management. 
A European-sponsored consulting firm is experimenting with ways to boost crop yields while reducing water usage. Until recently, Uzbeki cotton growers have used four to five times as much water as their counterparts in other nations. New programs are already aiming at cutting that usage in half. Farm restructuring and reforms are only beginning to improve the health of the aral environment. Even with efforts to improve the situation, the fate of the Aral Sea is irreversible. Uninformed decisions made many years ago have permanently scarred this land and its people. <laughs>